Hi everyone, my name is Melissa, and in this video I want to demonstrate an approach to the start-stop challenge from Access Analytic. The task is to calculate the total number of hours for a staff member on each month and date. We presented start and end dates that can cross over months and take the status into account dealing with possible typos. If you haven't participated yet and want to give this a go yourself, I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. You will find a link at the bottom of this page, but also in the description of this video. All right, let's go to the Power Query Editor. So this is the data, and I also have the expected outcome right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is select rows based on their status. Now the UI can help us a bit with this logic. So I'll select one of its text filters and I'll go with does not begin with the letter E. Press OK. Perfect. Now nothing happens and that's quite all right because this is in lowercase e, and exclude here starts with an uppercase e. But text.starts with has an optional third parameter. So I'm going to enter a comma here and enter that comparer. So comparer, ordinal ignore case. Press that check mark. Perfect. And now the exclude went away. Of course, you probably could have someone with very thick fingers, I don't know, and exclude might be typed without an initial E. Well, if that's the case, we can create some additional logic to go along with it. So we could also test if the word does not include an X. Let's add that as well. Just going to copy this. Or paste back the bulk of the syntax. And instead of text starts with, I'm going to go with text contains. Press tab to select that. So we're still considering the status field. That's good. And instead of an E, we're seeing if that contains an X. And we do want to ignore case there as well. Just wrap a set of parentheses around both our clauses. Don't forget that final parentheses and press that check mark. Perfect. So on to the main part of this challenge. And I'm going to add a custom column using the UI, and then I'll switch to the advanced editor. So here we go. Via that mini table icon in the top left corner, I'll select add a custom column. And at this point, I'm only interested in bringing stuff in that I will need later on. Now, because I want to work with multiple fields, I'm going to create a record. So using the record initializers, the, that's a set of square brackets. I can bring in the fields that I want, right? I have to create a name and then I can assign it a value. So as the push start date, Let's see if we can make that go away. SD equals bring in start date, comma. Now I can create another field inside my records. So I also want the start time equals start time, comma. Bring in another field, the end date. So ED equals stop date. And our final field will be the stop time. And time equals the stop time here. Close off my record and just press OK. So when I click off to the side in the white space here, we can see that we brought in all the values from this row, right? Now I can switch to the advanced editor window. Let's make that a bit bigger. Here we go. All right. So I'll format this, I'll go to this, enter this to a new line, separate everything out. All right. So now we can expand the logic that we need. 
Instead of a record, we could also use a nested let expression here, right? Now that's a choice. Either of those will work because we have multiple variables or field names with values assigned to them. Let's move this off to the side a bit so we can see the values that we're dealing with. The start date, that's a text value, and we need to transform that into a proper date. All I have to do to achieve that is wrap the function date from text around it. So date from text, press tab to select it, and just wrap that around it. Now for the start time, which is also a string, we need to convert that to a number. Then we can divide it by 100 and round it. We do not need any decimal places. Here we go. So number from. Divide the value by 100. And now we can wrap the next function around it. So number round. Select that, comma, zero decimal places. For the stop date, that's also a string. We also need to convert that into a date. So I'm just going to copy that function name right here, wrap that around it. And the same is for the end time, right? You can just copy the functions that I've got right here. And copy that as well and paste that here. Perfect. So I pasted a comment at the end and that's fine because I'm going to create another field in my record for some additional logic. So press enter because I want to construct a list of dates. So from the first date all the way up to the end date. I'll call that LD for list dates. And I'll use the function list.dates for that as well. So LD list dates, opening parentheses. It wants a starting date, and that will be the RSD value, right? Then it wants a count as number. So that's the difference between the start date and the end date. So here I can say number from. and subtract the start date from the end date. So end date minus start date. Comma. Next, it wants a step as duration. We want an increment of one day. So duration from one. Perfect. So we've created a list with dates from the very first start date up to the stop date. And we want to create a list with times that goes along with that, right? So comma, let's call that list times equals. So here you can have a day period of a single day, right? And that will require a slightly different logic than if it spans across multiple days. So that's something that we have to create a condition for. So I'll say each, or I'll say if our start date is the same as our end date, start date, equals our end date. Then I want the end time minus the start time, right? That will get us the correct value. But I want that in a list format. So I'm using the list initializes here. So I can say end time minus start time. Else, 
So if we have a date range that spans multiple days, then the first date will be 24 minus the start time. Again, I'll format that as a list. I want to create a list value. So entering those curly brackets, 24 minus my start time. And I can use the ampersand to append multiple lists to this. So for each whole day, I want to create a list with the value 24 because we have 24 hours in a day. So I'll use list.repeat for that. So list repeat, create a list that contains 24. And I want to repeat that a number of times, right? So I can count the number of days that I have in my list dates. So list count. List dates. And minus two. because we have a separate list right here for our start date. And I'm also going to create a separate list for the end time. So this will create a list with only 24 hours for each whole day. So for the end time, we can just append that, right? Again, as a list, so using the list initializers called the end time. So now we've got two big lists. We have a list of dates and we have a list of times and the lengths of those lists are equal to one another. So from those lists, from those two lists, we can construct a single table. Let's do that. I'll call that T equals table from columns. It wants a list with lists and our first list is list with dates, right? Now that list of dates contains individual dates from the start date up to the stop date. So we can transform that list of dates to end of month date value instead. Pass in our list, so list dates. and call the date end of month function. So date end of month. Let's see if I can find it. There it is. Comma. And get our list times in there as well. So we want that to be a type table. And we know that a table has two columns. The first column, that will be a date column. So date. And the values in that column will be of type date as well. So date dot type. And the second column, that will be our hours column. And that will be an integer. Perfect. So I've got the closing bracket there. This is the closing bracket of my record. And this is the closing bracket of my table.add column function. So let's see what this returns. I'll press done. And we still get a record. Press off to the side in the white space. And we see that we have a table here. Let's drill into one. So I'll add it as a new query. Click off to the side here. Perfect. So all I'm really interested in is that final output table. So let's remove this helper query. I can delete that. And from this record, I can select that field called T. So let's open this up. 
an inner set of single square brackets. Let's call T. Press the check mark. Perfect. So now we have that table right here. Now, of course, from the table that we're looking at, right, there are only two columns of interest now the staff name and our custom column. So I can use projection to only retain those two columns from this table, right? So in a, set of, in a set of single square brackets, I can select the fields that I want to keep from this table. So another set of square brackets, I'll call staff name, comma, and also select the custom column. Press the check mark. Perfect. We can expand that nested table. And all that's left to do now is aggregate these values. So I'll select the staff name column. I'll go to the transform tab, select pivot column. It wants to know what values are. Now the values are in the hours column, right? These are the things that we want to aggregate. So I'll select that. Let's open this up and it suggests to perform a sum on that. Perfect, let's do that. So I'll press OK. So it's giving me a weird result here, right? And I think I know where I've made a slight mistake. So I'll step back to my custom column and here inside list dates, right? I forgot to add one back. So I only kept the initial date and I didn't include both the end and the start date. So I have to add one here. So plus one, press that check mark, step all the way to the end and that resolved that small problem. All right. In this video, you've seen my approach to the Access Analytics Start-Stop Challenge. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching. All the best. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.